Federal whistleblowers save billions of taxpayer dollars. They protect the public's health uh, and safety, and they keep the government's business transparent and the government officials honest. In the next few minutes, I'd like to talk to you about uh, the role of the Office of Special Counsel in this very important program that we run to protect federal whistleblowers. Um, OSC plays a special role in encouraging federal employees to come forward with information that they may have uh, that might reveal waste, fraud, and abuse in the government, and OSC plays a special role in protecting those employees after they come forward. Uh, so as we go forward in this uh, video over the next uh, few minutes, I'm going to walk you through the process at OSC uh, and explain uh, how the complaint process works and how we handle those complaints. So, what should you do if you have evidence of waste, fraud, abuse, or corruption? Well, there are many places a federal employee can bring that information, but the two that come to mind are the Office of Special Counsel and your own Inspector General. In either case, uh, we will try to protect your confidentiality. If you wish to remain anonymous, we will honor that wish to the extent the law allows. The only exceptions where we might be required to reveal uh, uh, your identity is if, for example, uh, there was imminent harm or an Im imminent criminal act uh, that we believe might, might occur and the law would require us to do that, or if it's impossible to conduct an investigation without revealing your identity. But in any case, we would consult with you before doing that. So what happens if you bring your whistleblowing complaint to OSC? We have a special disclosure unit that handles these things, and what they do is they evaluate your complaint, determine whether or not it is substantially likely that the information you're bringing to us uh, really reveals or evidences a condition of waste, fraud, and, uh, or abuse. If we conclude that the evidence does show that, then our responsibility is not to investigate the complaint, but we refer the allegations or complaint to the agency. We require the agency to investigate it and to report back to us. Once we receive the report, we'll share the contents with you. We'll allow you to comment on the contents. We'll try to resolve the complaint if it hasn't been resolved. And ultimately, we will share that report with the president and with Congress and the respective oversight committees in Congress who have responsibility for that particular agency. Are disclosures to Congress protected? Yes, they are. Since 1912, uh, federal agencies are prohibited from discouraging or interfering with the federal employee's ability to communicate directly with Congress. And if you believe that your agency has interfered or is trying to discourage you from exercising that right, then you may file an OSC complaint and we can look at it. Am I required to blow the whistle through my chain of command? The answer is no. However, if your disclosure involves information that you believe might be prohibited from public disclosure, be very careful. You must use a protected channel in order to benefit from the protections of the whistleblower laws. So, if you have information in your disclosure that includes classified information, for example, make sure you use one of the protected channels. The Office of Inspector General is always a protected channel, and so is the Office of Special Counsel. Now, OSC is not the only place where you can challenge an act of retaliation. If you're a member of a collective bargaining unit, you can probably file a grievance and, go to, and have your union take the case to arbitration for relief. Or if you've suffered a serious act of retaliation, I'm talking about a long suspension or maybe you were fired, you may have a right to go directly to the Merit System Protection Board and appeal that act of retaliation. However, in any case, you can always bring 
your claims of, of retaliation to the Office of Special Counsel, and we'll look at it. If you're entitled to relief from retaliation, what relief uh, could we get for you? The law says that a whistleblower who has been retaliated should be put back in the position that he or she would have been in in the absence of the retaliatory act. We call that uh, the status quo ante. But basically what it means is if you've been suspended, uh, what we'll do is we'll have the agency cancel the suspension, and if you lost pay, your pay and your benefits would be restored. Uh, in the case of a removal, it would be the same thing. We would get you restored to your job. If you lost pay or benefits, we would get that restored as well. Also, whistleblowers who are retaliated against, and all victims of prohibited personal practices, would be eligible for attorney fees and the costs of processing uh, the complaint or any litigation. In addition, in some cases, uh, we could seek monetary damages for you. Finally, there's one additional remedy for whistleblowers. The law allows you to collect compensatory damages. What are compensatory damages? Those are damages that are difficult to measure because you don't have a receipt. Things like emotional distress, pain, suffering, they could be included in compensatory damages. So what should you include in your complaint of whistleblower retaliation? Well, the first thing you should tell us is what your whistleblowing was. Not all whistleblowing may meet the legal definition of whistleblowing. Uh, you have to show that you disclose information that revealed perhaps a violation of law, rule, or regulation, perhaps gross mismanagement by your agency, or a gross waste of funds, an abuse of authority, or something that created a public danger to health or safety. And also tell us to whom you made the disclosure. After you've summarized your whistleblowing disclosure, if you have information that shows that your agency knew about the disclosure, please provide that information to you. Then tell us what personnel action you're challenging. We have authority to look at a broad range of personal actions. We look at removals. We look at suspensions, uh, involuntary reassignments, coerced resignations, serious personal actions. We also look at less serious personal actions that might include an annual performance evaluation or a significant change in duties. And then finally, if you have information or evidence that you believe shows that your disclosure was connected to the personal action you're challenging, please include that. What happens if you feel you uh, are in imminent harm of retaliation? Uh, for example, your agency has given you a letter proposing your removal, but they haven't actually fired you. Can you file a complaint and can you seek relief at that time? Absolutely. OSC has the ability to intervene midstream in the Retaliatory Act and ask the agency to stop. If the agency doesn't want to stop because they don't believe that they're retaliating, OSC also has the ability to ask the Merit System Protection Board for an order to stop what's happening to you. Uh, so uh, when you file your complaint, be sure to include what stage the act of retaliati retaliation is at. There's, there's one thing I should tell you before you decide to file your OSC complaint. You actually have three options. One is to file the OSC complaint. Two is perhaps to file an appeal with the Merit System Protection Board. And three, you might have the option of filing a grievance under your collective bargaining agreement. The law requires you to elect one of those remedies. And once you choose one, you are not going to be able to uh, exercise your rights under the other two. So before you pick one, try to think about 
which remedy you want to pursue. What happens to officials who retaliate against whistleblowers? OSC has authority to seek disciplinary action against them. We can seek disciplinary action from their employers, or we can bring an action before the Merit System Protection Board. <clears throat> okay. So what happens after uh, your complaint of prohibited personnel practice or your complaint of whistleblower reprisal arrives at OSC? We have a unit in our headquarters office. It's called the Complaints Examining Unit. It's staffed with over 20 complaints examiners. And what they'll do is they'll look at your complaint, they'll talk to you, and they'll have to make a determination as to whether there's reasonable grounds for us to believe that, in fact, whistleblower retaliation likely occurred. If they believe that it occurred, then they will refer it to uh, the Investigation and Prosecution Division uh, for further review. Uh, it's also possible that your complaint might be eligible for mediation. OSC has a robust mediation program, and uh, it's, it's an alternative to an investigation process, which can often be lengthy. And what we do is we ask the cooperation of both the individual employee and the employing agency. And if they both volunteer for the process, then they bring, we bring them into our office for a, usually a one-day mediation to see if we can settle the complaint. We at OSE are here to listen to you and to protect you. I hope this short video has been helpful to give you an overview of the protections available to federal whistleblowers. But if you'd like more information, please visit us at www.osc.gov.